Hi, I'm Birdman Mel, and folks, we're going to have some fun tonight. I don't know about you, but God blessed me with a pretty good day today. Although, oh my God, I am so sick of Harry and Henrietta Houdini, and I'm sure you are too, so I won't dwell on that much. But I want to welcome you and thank you for tuning in. I'm a little nervous about what time we pick tonight, and I want to thank everybody that voted on the best time to have our future sessions. We listen to you. You are our boss, just like you're the boss of the locally owned wild bird suppliers, nursery and hardware stores all over the country that I want you to turn to for products or one similar to what you see tonight. Deal? Let's have some fun. I want to say and remind you that every session we do, we have over $500 worth of prizes. And I hold up these binoculars every week, and I tell you what, I've used them lately because guess what? In mid-Missouri, you folks in Columbia, Mexico, and around, the Orioles arrived yesterday, and the hummingbirds are here. So let's have some fun. And we'll be talking Saturday about goldfinches, because they're turning bright gold. But we'll also be talking about some guys that are coming, the red-breasted grosbeaks, the indigo buntings, where these guys will be handy, because they're a little bashful, they stay in the woods. So shame is shelter wings. We appreciate the deal you made us on these binoculars. And folks, if you want optics, I recommend Sheltered Wings. Now we got a topic tonight called Squirrel Lovers. And folks, I'm going to have you hopefully get convinced I'm a squirrel lover. But I got to say, Sheltered Wings does have scopes for white frills. Not that you would want to shoot a squirrel or anything, but you know what I mean. So what states are you guys in? Let us know. You guys will get in a pool for special prizes. Yeah, come on in. Tell us where you're from. What we do every week is we have several ways you win prizes. One of the ways that everything I hold up, somebody will win, and it could be you. And the ways you win are let us know where you're from. So everybody outside of Missouri is in a pool, and everybody in Missouri is in a pool. So make sure that you let us know where you're from, okay? Because it's just fun to know. It, it kind of helps me know, hey, what kind of birds do I talk about? Because this is where my audience is, and it lets you win. So appreciate that. The other way that you can win more is... Hey, ask a question, okay? I want to answer them. They just slipped me this piece of paper. I'm going to answer one in a minute. Comment on something, and most of all, when I ask a question to you, give an answer. You never know. Your name may come in first, and you'll win one of the big prizes. So don't want to take too long on that, because I know you're here for information about how to, oh my God, love squirrels. But I love squirrels, and I got to love squirrels tonight, because Harry and Houdini's you know, they kind of made it clear, Mel, if you don't love squirrels, uh, yep, we may do worse than rob your bank account. So we're not going to dwell on that, but we're going to have fun. But again, I want to emphasize, go to your local wild bird supplier, your local nursery for plants. Bev and I, my wife, had a great night last night. I mean, it was raining on us before we got done, but we put in a lot of native plants from the Native Plant Society in Columbia that we bought. A lot of great plants from our local independent nurseries like Giving Gardens a shelter workshop, and Strawberry Hills, and the folks here at Callaway Farms. We thank all of you. And, and folks in your market, go to those guys. They're the folks to buy plants from. They know what works in your market. I guarantee you those guys in the big box, forgive me, guys, but you know, you guys in those stores, I love you. My brother-in-law works in one of those, but they don't know what kind of plants attract birds. Go to your local suppliers. So uh, we're going to share some diagrams of what to build. So hardware stores, your you, those kind of places, your uh, lumber yards, go to your local guys to do that. But regardless, you know, one thing I want to make clear is please understand that I am not a squirrel hater. We've gotten a lot of comments this week that says I'm a squirrel hater. And somebody just asked, how many babies does a mother have? Well, a mother gray squirrel normally has, you know, three to six, as many as six, but normally she's a really... I guess this is a good thing. I mean, it is a great thing that she's a good mother and she'll raise at least three of those each year. So remember, every mom and dad are replaced by three babies, but oops, it's times a couple times a year. And God help us, we're going to show you a house and a condo you might help them with. Because we all, yes we do, don't we love squirrels? Okay, so we're going to have a lot of fun, but I want to make sure you know, look at this. This was, this is on my wall at work. Greetings from the nut house. This is not something a squirrel hater would have on his wall, okay? Make sure you know that. And I want to make sure you know that Birdman Mel and his company offers 
two brochures. And you can get these at birdmanmail.com. And in May, we are going to birdmanmail.com as a place to do these broadcasts. So you've been going to songbirdstation.com, and God bless you local people in central Missouri. But our audience has grown, and we want to make sure the world knows it's about more than that. So one is tips for deterring squirrels. And, of course, this one caused me to get kidnapped last week by Harry and Henrietta Houdini and that vicious gang. But I would gratefully say that we also have tips for attracting squirrels. So please go on our website and vote for the fact that Birdman Mel likes squirrels. Because the Houdini gang has made it very clear. If the vote comes in the other way, there could be rough days ahead. And we won't dwell too much on that. And yes, Harry and Henrietta, you are right. Some of the very first words my children you've heard have said... Get out of here, squirrels, and don't come back. I'm sorry. They didn't totally understand when they heard Grandpa say those words, probably too often, that what I was meaning is go down to the bottom of the yard where I have this great place for you to eat, have your gymnastics, and enjoy treats. Ooh, this is hard, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Or you could have a good time. That You know, maybe it's in the range of that other item that Seamus from Shelter Wings gave me that scope, but maybe not. Okay, we won't mess around with that. But we will have some fun tonight. But there is a rumor that there is a press conference this weekend about what is the local authorities going to do on the threat that the squirrels have made and how are we going to recover the money that they stole from Central Trust in our behalf. And that's horrible, horrible ransom demands that I thank you for doing. But let's get on with the show. I want to talk about a few books and stuff. Enjoying Squirrels More or Less is a very inexpensive book for Bird Watchers Digest. A few facts I got from there. Did you know that squirrels, oh Lord, sometimes I, I trust you and believe in your wisdom, but they've been around since 37 and 54 million years ago. They roamed with the dinosaurs. And I'm, I mean, fortunately, one of the dinosaurs did not step on the last squirrels and they survived. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And they are members of the, I have to quote what I read, rodent. Look up in the dictionary what that means. It means a loving, kind creature. And there are 2,000 of the 4,000 mammals creatures are rodents. Okay? And the kind that you guys have to enjoy around the USA are the Eastern Gray. Those are the ones that, this guy right here, this is from Wild Republic, fun little squirrel. Yeah, I love you so much, Mr. Squirrel. Did you see that, Mr. Harriet and Henry? At a Houdini. They are basically from Louisiana to Minnesota and east, okay? Kind of a fun group. Oh my gosh. If you listen to a video we've got up and I'm looking out, I'm trying to find the guy. I actually found last night, forgive me wife, a DVD I was given years ago on squirrels. How great they are and some fun things from George Harrison. Look at trying to find George Harrison. Anybody know him? Like having him call Birdman Mel. And I know we don't use a lot of DVD just now, but a lot of fun things like, you know, those guys uh, kind of eat a lot of wires and kind of cause a lot of electrical outages. And that's sad, and I hate that that happens and, and for the people. But, uh, and, you know, and then there's the fox squirrels in the eastern part. Those are the guys I kind of like better. They're kind of the brown guy. It, when, when there's a, a, a doubt of who to encourage to feed on my feeders, I like those big old fox squirrels. And they're having a tough time the way the forest are just, you know, we're leaving. There are some gray squirrels in the west, but the ranges are smaller. And I got to tell you, you guys that are tuning in from out east, when bird feeder companies test stuff, we almost always send them to Virginia out in there. You got some of the darndest squirrels out there. They don't eat their weight in bird seed every week. They eat it every day, and they can gnaw through Teflon coating on a battleship, I think. So that's where, uh, where different squirrels are. You'll find a lot of fun facts in this back book. I gotta say, when I talk squirrels, I, I, I go back in time. One of my favorite books is Nuts About Squirrels, but it brings me back to memories. This guy that wrote this, Mr. Richard Mallory, and I've started sending emails to try to find him. He wrote a column years ago called Dickie Bird News. It, I have those going all the way back into the 70s, and I learned more about birding with this guy's tongue-in-cheek humor than anything. He's got a great book called Birding 101. But we're going to have fun now. We're going to talk about a little bit about what we talked about last week. I don't want to slow down too much. 
folks have told me to, but I'm sorry. I'm still a guy that goes like a hurricane, or in our part of the world, we say a tornado across the plane. But I don't want you to forget, I talked about a company, Brown, that I love their feeders, but I think I didn't give enough justice to these old wire cages that we've had for a long time around feeders like this one from Barracraft. They work really good, and this time of year, I really like these feeders because they keep the grackles out like we talked last year. So don't dismiss that these are great feeders too, okay? It's not all for one and one for all. It's all for anything that a cheese would go that you want in your backyard, okay? So some fun things. Also, I actually, as some of you guys know, I came from a little bitty old town in Missouri called Bunston. And for years, 23 years, I worked for Checkerboard Square. And this was true to my heart when I saw it recently. Feed and seed. So all you Purina guys, hey, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. It says feed and seed on the end. It's that closing bar feeder. And the bar goes down when the squirrel hangs on. Now some people say the squirrel's wife will hang on the back while he hangs on the front. I say, what the heck? If they want to do that, it's worth this bird seed they eat to do it. So I love this feeder. Miss Beck, can you help me out with this? This is a heavy thing. I forgot to say my daughter Beck is our ex uh, Becky is our executive producer here in the place, and my, and my wife, Bev, helps me with everything I do. Why she put up with me for 40 years, nobody knows. The other thing we talked about this last week was, you know, use baffles like this torpedo baffle here. Going to have some stuff to hand you. And this wraparound thing baffle here, Beck. But the thing is have one that are big enough to go around the pole and put it way up high, at least four and preferably five feet up in the air. So you'll need a big old, oh, help me out here before I tear up your, my wife's thing. A big old honking pole like this that's way up in the air. Okay? But I don't want to spend much time because Harry and Henrietta are going to think I hate squirrels. But guys, it's not just about squirrels. But don't forget, the Slinky works really good on your feeder. We sell these rascals at Songbird Essentials. And most of all, at your local Wild Bird supplier. Don't forget this thing. And hey, Henrietta and Harriet. Don't your kids have fun bouncing on these? And I know most of the time you end up jumping over them, okay? The other thing to remember, Henrietta and Harriet, is I don't hate squirrels. Why would I sell products like you what, what, when, cups and stuff, like I showed last week, or this cute little, what a cute little bird feeder from our friends in Bali carved this, and my friends love it. I mean, I would not do that if I did not also love squirrels, okay? But many of the things I talk about, Oh, also, keep this guy away. Yeah, I love you, but ooh, you make me mad every night. Mr. Raccoon, about the only thing to do is great big old baffles here, and we'll talk about him. One feeder I did forget last week that I love and I use is the Aspects Vista Dome. So what's so special about this? You can raise it all the way down. That don't work very good. Nobody eats. But then you raise it up, whatever, and it lets whatever birds you want in. I use the Vista Dome not just to keep... Forgive me, Henrietta and Harriet, your buddy's out. But remember, I got that playground for you we're going to talk about. But it'll also keep grackles and, you know, birds like that out. Uh, so just a neat feeder that you can raise up or down to let in who you want. Sometimes the pigeons are bug bugging me or the doves in my part of the world. So neat little feeder to raise up and down. A lot of fun. But let's get on to tonight's program. It's about squirrel loving. And, you know, I don't know if you noticed in the ransom demands... But this was what the Houdinis wanted in every backyard so their kids could have fun. It's America's number one squirrel feeder. And no, it's not for target practice, you guys in South Missouri. It, and I didn't mean to be any picking on you there. It's a fun way for baby squirrels and adults to, to have fun. It's called the spongy bungee cord. A few tips. Put it down low so they can touch it. And then, I got some peanut butter over here. You know, put some peanut butter, or we'll talk about something else, on the corn to get them to come to it. Because the reality is, folks, no matter what you do, if you're offering squirrel ice cream called black oil sunflower seeds or other bird seed in your yard, and you think your corn is going to call them over, think about what you're going to do. If somebody's got last week's hot dogs on the grill, and they got a filet mignon on the other grill, which grill are you going to? Okay, so bungee cord, I love that thing. One of my favorite new bird feeders we've got, or excuse me, squirrel feeders we have, is a picnic table. All over the nation, everybody's loving building these little picnic tables, and we got this really good kit. Yep. Yeah, it's all here in one box. It's really easy to put together. Even 
Even though Birdman Mel and his wife put one together, but it's made right here in Mexico, Missouri, and this is what you end up with. And I will say, what do you notice on here? Is this ear corn? Nope. I had this sucker out in the yard with ear corn on it. Guess what? Nobody ate it. Nobody said, why would I go? No offense, corn farmers, and I live, you know, corn fields are all around here. Why would I eat corn when you got all that good stuff? So there are some folks at CNS that have some incredible products that are, uh, you know, some sweet corn log things and some peanut butter things. And if you don't think they like sweet corn, think about that raccoon. If you've ever planted sweet corn, they come in the night. Whoa, stuff is coming at me. And I'm going to show you that stuff. They plant, they come in the night before that sweet corn is done, ready for you to eat, and they grab it. Well, the same way here. Look, they already took a bit bite out of this old thing, and they left my ear corn alone for the last six days. So keep in mind these other products that make squirrels eat what you want instead of your bird seed. When in doubt, peanuts. These peanuts like here, they always love peanuts. You know, maybe if your neighbor's got a feeder out and you don't like those peanuts, you know, these are unsalted peanuts. You know, I've heard of some squirrels having a heart attack from salted peanuts. I wouldn't want to feed them, but I'll leave it up to you. Okay. But, you know, we had little feeders like this. And I'm running tests now. Ear corn versus these great products from CNS. I got to tell you, I kind of know how this one's going to turn out. But Perina taught me, you know, move this one here, move that one there. We're going to do our best to be scientific. But, Ms. Beck, thank you. You know, but if you think you're going to put that out there and throw some corn on it, and the squirrels are going to come. <laughs> Good luck. But it might work, though. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Because there is a big part of our crowd, or at least some part, that like the squirrels and don't like the, you know, don't want to feed the birds. And there is a psychiatrist I can refer you to on that. Just kidding. But budgets are different. Different parts of the world are different. But, you know, what you want to feed, you know, in the tray of those things is something like our squirrel referral in mid-Missouri. But your local wild bird supplier has something that has whole peanuts in it. Look in there. Yep, you know, take a good look. There's a bunch of that uh, that uh, squirrel candy, that uh, those sunflowers. There's some whole peanuts. There's some pumpkin seeds. They like pumpkin seeds. So at Halloween, remember your pumpkin. But there's a lot of good stuff in there. Okay? But uh, whatever you do, you know, put when you put that ear cone out, you might put uh, peanut butter on it. But think about it. This has some stuff, mono, soaked, whatever, that ain't natural. And this stuff from Pine Tree Farms, this tree icing spread, has stuff on it. And it says for birds. And what respectful squirrel will ever eat peanut butter when they could do that? So fun stuff. Remember these CNS products at your local wild bird supplier? They like it. Now, if you want to really trick your squirrel, you might want to sneak in this hot pepper wine or put it on your neighbor's thing. You know what happened then. But we have a lot of fun things. The squirrels can swing like an acrobat in the slip. And the uh, circus, this is one we make in Missouri. We have all kinds of metal things here. In fact, I'll take that tray over there. This is one from Woodlink. This is from, this company is now owned by the Panacea family. I like them. We got this big old honking wildlife flock here. I throw it in the woods. I gotta be, you know, I gotta tell you some pine tree farms. And maybe a squirrel might fall off it and break its neck. Of course, I hope not. But the, what I feed it for is for the turkey and the quail. And oh, no, I'm glad there's not a squirrel there. There are all kinds of feeders like little chairs, recycled plastic and not. That you can put ear corn on. You can make them go round and round and make them dizzy. Whoa, baby. You can make them go round and round a couple at a time. You can make them go round and round four at a time. I did find it. Part of all my videos is learn from my mistakes. You can't mix these darn old ear corn things. I like them from, from CNS on these feeders, but they don't go round and round with a hoop because they hit the edges here. So something I kind of learned today. But the ear corn on this, hey, it's fun to see them go round and round. And, you know, there was some original things, like nice cute little thing here where you put in one ear of corn and just a thing to hang one. Hey, that works for low budgets and you, you don't have a lot of money. You're not going to feed the birds a way to feed one ear of corn. These come from Heritage Farms. This one comes from, you know, one of my favorite folks in Songbird Essential People in Mexico. And then we have fun, you know, Adirondack chairs that you can put at your lake house. So good stuff. Got to hold up now, though, something that I don't understand. I guess it's for somebody who gave you that white elephant gift that you're supposed to put on your wall or put in your living room, a squirrel condo or house. 
If you love squirrels so much as, of course, I do, Henrietta and Harriet, yes, yes, I'm going to put up the squirrel house. Yes, yes, we're going to put up a lot of these. You can put these up, and it gives them a place to raise that lovely nest of six babies and have three come out and do that over and over again. So your yard is full of squirrels. Won't that be fun? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going nuts because kidnapping does that to you. But it's okay. I'll be okay. But now we're going to move on into treats, you know, special stuff for that special squirrel, for you squirrel lovers. This is probably our number one selling feeder called Squirrel in a Jar. Isn't that cool? It sits here. Squirrels come in the back. Matt McGuire and all the folks at Songbird Essentials Woodshop makes these for us here in Mexico, Missouri. Squirrels come in the back here, and you can see them in the jar. But don't put corn in there because they'll say, are you kidding me? I'm coming in there, and you got ice cream over there. Put whole peanuts, put... Stuff like the squirrel referral, they'll be in there. I have heard horrible, horrible, horrible rumor that some people slap a lid on this sucker 360 degrees, they have supper. But I would never, ever do that. Okay? Just keep that in mind. But uh, some other fun ways. Do you remember them peanuts with peanut rings like this? We have it. Songbird Essentials, of course. You're getting tired of hearing that, I know. But however you present them, whole peanuts. The squirrels love, so do the jays, the scrub jays for you guys out west. A lot of birds like these, but, you know, for those of you like me that love squirrels, this is a great way to treat them. Some other ways you do, if you don't want the jays to get to it, this is a neat little thing that Carolyn Looker and her crew over at Looker taught us is a little snack box. And I think her husband was one of the first to market the thing where they lift up the lid, look at that gourmet food. You can tell that Birdman Mel loves squirrels. There's the peanuts, there's the whole peanuts, there's the... Those sunflower seeds, everything they love. And there, are metal, and there are metal versions of that, like this one from the uh, Panacea family. And heaven forbid, I would never, ever, ever be the one. Never, no, no, no. That might sneak a little of this hot pepper stuff we talked about last week. From FM Brown or this cold stuff on your neighbor's stuff. And you think about it, you know, somebody told me they did that. And that would... You know, that's okay, but think about it. They might come to your place, so why in the world would you do it? So, you know, if you want to keep an eye on your stuff, fine, but be careful. If you got a neighbor close by, they might come. There are fun things on squirrels. I didn't tell you as many facts as we know, and you're going to see a lot of great posts this week on things like some fun stories that I'm going to share out of some of uh, the Dickie Bird News authors' uh, books. And we will have those books at Songbird Station and help your local wild bird stores get them. We have some fun cartoons from another article, uh, uh, a book I love called Cheap Tri Thrills. Sorry, the old bird man's had a long day. But, uh, you know, stay tuned. We're going to have, you know, my wife gave me say, something several uh, days ago. She said, well, we want to teach people some fun things. But above all else, every day, let's try to make somebody smile because these are tough times. So. Hope you know that was one of my goals. I hope you smiled some tonight. You know, we do have some fun things. I'm just going to end because I do have to worry about those that squirrel gang. Who would offer puzzles like this that says, who me? Are you what, what, where? Or who would offer cute little things that some folks in the Philippines and villages there on a fair trade make us out of burly palm? Or who would have a coffee cup like this? that didn't love the squirrels. And so I remember, you know, we have little plant steaks like this, and I did want to uh, close with, don't forget to go look at the other videos, like how to attract hummingbirds. Uh, and thank you, Becky, very, very much. Where I want to say, after I, I filmed a lot of videos last night with my wife, Bev, on plants, and I forgot to put on my pin tonight, ask me about how to grow native. But native plants and annuals can get you more hummingbirds, more birds than anything you can do. And yeah, the squirrels eat a few of them. But when in doubt, this little lantana plant, it's a go-to plant for those of you with, you know, not green thumbs, that other one. You can't kill this sucker in hot, dry weather. And it's the one that kicks in when everything else gets tired in Missouri and the butterflies and the hummingbirds love it. And this thing here, these open-throated petunias that all your local nurseries can help you find. And they can help you find an 80 plant. So just a quick recap to don't forget... Go back and look at that hummingbird session. Look at those videos. That hummingbird's tongue really does go all the way up to here. So you can learn a bunch. And somebody had a question. Any questions to win a prize? I don't know quite what that means, but the bottom line is I've goofed and I forgot to ask you questions. So what is the squirrel that is east of the Rockies that most of us fight? 
I mean love. Okay? It's not black. It's what? Okay? What is the squirrel that is brown that we all love east of the Rockies? What is the squirrel that's on the west side of the country? That might be like one on the east side, but not quite so widespread. Giving you a lot of chances for prizes here. And you, th you can thank my wife, Bev, for getting me on this path. What? How many babies does the average squirrel have? And now we're going to go back to last week. How high can a squirrel jump? How far can he jump out? Every answer to every one of those questions wins a great prize. Okay? Okie doke. I do want to end by just saying don't forget we will be posting. Somebody tell me what this is for. We have a video about attracting these birds. You might go to pmca.org and find out. Somebody tell me what we were trying to attract. I'm getting on a roll now, Bev. Uh, with this pumpkin, go back and look on a Saturday ago when my dear wife led a, a uh, I guess, a, what do you call it, a gymnastics class, waving these pumpkins in the air to attract um, uh, what animal? Ah, or not animal, bird. Almost gave it away. And I told you about my favorite feeder for my mom that nobody tell her it's coming. We hand make these things. What are we putting in there? What are the two ingredients of that jelly? Oh my gosh. Think of all the questions you should be answering and you'll learn in the prizes you get. What birds did we talk about in the last sessions that you could put this big red Christmas bow up to attract? Look at songbirdstation.com, but go fast because somebody's going to beat you. Hint, hint. Another question, what hummingbird is this guy that is the main one east of the Rockies? Does Birdman Mel consider that his song? Another question. And last but not least, stay tuned this Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. when we're going to attract the birds on this feeder. Hint, it does say Finch's favorite three tube feeder, but there are a certain kind of finch on there. But we'll talk about their cousins, the other couple other finches, and we'll talk about other birds that I mentioned early in this session that come in this time of year that you can do things like water, feed, the right kind of blooming native plants in your yard to attract. And I did mention a couple sessions ago, another question for a winner, what bird brilliant purple bird that I forgot to bring on stage with me will be in many of our backyards in often Birdman Mel sees on this feeder. So here it is. Take a quick peek. Ms. Director to Becky told me to turn it around. There's your hints. I hope you had fun. I hope I brought a smile to your face. I hope you learned something about squirrels because you know I love those squirrels. Did you hear that Henry and Harrietta? And I'm hoping that you stay tuned. Go to songbridgestation.com because I'm really believing there's going to be a, a press conference in the next couple days talking about what efforts are taking place in central Missouri to lovingly talk to those that gang and bring them to fair justice compared to what happened to Jesse James and gang. But most of all, I want each and every one of you to take a few minutes. I'll close with a couple things as I always do. Take five minutes. Go out with your grandchildren, your children, set in one spot, see what's around. But most of all, don't hesitate ever to reach out, and I'll be here, and Becky and Bev will help me answer questions for at least 30 minutes, that how can we help you attract the birds you want to your backyard and solve the problems you have in your backyard. But don't forget, in your neighborhood, in your town, there are locally owned wild bird suppliers Locally owned nurseries that know the right plants and locally owned hardware stores that can help you with organic lawn care and the, how to build a birdhouse or heaven forbid that bird uh, condo or that squirrel condo I showed you. Support those people. They are the ones that put the, you know, the uniform on your child's back. They're the ones that support every cause. They're the ones that are safe to shop right now in these very, very tough times. And I'll end this as I do every session or every email I send. I'll just tell everyone of you, please, just take a moment and remember that nature is a stress reliever from God. Take time today to listen to the birds sing.